Hey, welcome to the Gavel. I'm Linda Akibi. It was a sad day for Nigerians when the news of the killing of more than 20 children in the federal government college, Yobe State, spread across the country. The news sent shivers down our spine, as this is not the first time students are being targeted by terrorists. The killing was widely condemned by many Nigerians, and the Senate issued some important directives to the army. Let's see. Nigerians woke on Tuesday to learn that more than 20 children who were students of the federal government college, Yoba State, were killed as they slept in their hostels. Reports emerged that the students were brutally murdered by gunmen believed to be Boko Haram insurgents. This is not the first time innocent students have been cut down by the bullets of insurgents. In September 2013, Boko Haram gunmen stormed a college dormitory in College of Agriculture, Juba, and killed more than 30 students. When the reports of the killing reached the National Assembly, the Senate Committee on Defense condemned the killings and asked the Chief of Army Staff to relocate his office temporarily to Meduguri. The committee during the budget defense session also directed the Chief of Army Staff to provide special security for all schools and health institutions in the crisis prone states in the north. The committee condemns the atrocity being unleashed by the Boko Haram element of innocent citizens of the country, especially in the northeastern part of our great country. We regret what happened yesterday in the killing of innocent students in cold blood. The Committee on Defense and Army has by this issue a directive that the Chief of Army staff take the following immediate and urgent actions. One, properly strategize on possible new ways of curbing these SSCs. Two, mobilize all available resources and face the insurgency directly and then bring them to be on their knees. We heard of your plan of location to Maduguri, although we have not been informed, but we as a committee overseeing your activities on behalf of the Senate direct that your office be temporarily relocated to 7 div in Maduguri and that you take urgent and appropriate steps to quell the situations. The chairman of the committee, Senator Thompson Sekiba, urged the Nigerian army to re-strategize on new ways to curb the incessant killing of Nigerians in the northern parts of the country. The chief of army staff, Major General Kenneth Minima, assured the committee that the army was up to the task of ending insurgency in the country. I want to reassure the committee that the Nigerian army is up to the task. We know that in uh, insurgencies like this, there are bound to be collateral damages by the insurgents. But the regular forces will, over time, and within the shortest possible time, twist the balance of this war against them, and they will be on their own, and indeed, will bring them to their knees. President of the Senate, Senator David Mark, also condemned in strong terms the gruesome mother of the children. Senator Mark lamented that insurgents have no justification to kill students who neither offended them nor committed any crime, saying that even in war situations, children and women are always spared. In his words, and I quote, This open declaration of war on everybody, especially defenseless students, cannot be justified. This is inhuman. It is animalistic and barbaric. It is unthinkable that this is happening in Nigeria. It is also curious that under an emergency rule when security apparatus should be on red alert, this mayhem still persists. Honestly, this calls for soul searching and I believe the security authorities must rise to this challenge. End of quote. Senator Mark sympathized with the government and people of Yoba State, especially the families of the bereaved, saying that the terror is not just national, but an international threat that calls for bravery on the part of everyone to confront. Now, activities have intensified in the Senate 
and the House of Representatives as standing committees have begun legislative work on the 2014 appropriation bill. Some of the ministries and agencies which appeared before the committees include the Ministry of Education, Special Duties, the Police, the EFCC and ICPC to name a few. The budget defense by the ministry's departments and agencies is just the beginning of the legislative process which the 2014 budget proposal will pass through before it completes its journey through the National Assembly. The 2014 budget was presented to the National Assembly rather late in 2013. We will not forget in a hurry one of the issues that led to the late presentation of the budget, namely the inability of the Senate and the House of Representatives to agree on the benchmark price of crude in the medium-term expenditure framework MTEF. Anyway, both houses eventually agreed on the crude oil benchmark price of $77.5 per barrel. And the finance minister presented the budget to both houses in December 2013. With a late presentation of the budget, federal lawmakers do not have the luxury of time and need to begin work as quickly as possible. And this is what occurred during the week. Both houses began legislative work on the 2014 budget. Several ministries, departments and agencies appeared before both houses to defend their budget. In the House of Representatives, officials of the Ministry of Education appeared before the House Committee on Education to defend its 2014 budget. But if we have enough funds, obviously it will be in our own interest that day in day out, teachers are trained and they are trained so that we are able to give what is required to our children to improve in their performance, at least the public uh, exams. The committee also took the ministry up on some aspects of his budget. And they query that the amount being spent for such travels, for such workshops, for such conferences, year in, year out, is more than enough to train and retrain thousands and thousands of teachers in a given year. Some other agencies appeared before the House Committee on Finance to defend the expected remittances to the Federation account. The committee questioned the submission of the Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority. I do not agree that in 2012 you should have paid 40 million and I also do not agree that in 2013 you should be paying 40 uh, million. So please, just write to us so that we can take it to another level. On what basis did you pay that amount? Number one, is not on operating surplus. Number two, is not on 25% of uh, gross. In the Senate, the Inspector General of Police appeared before the Senate Committee on Police Affairs to defend its budget. He stated how much was appropriated for capital, recurrent and overhead for the police force. The Inspector General drew the attention of the committee to the steady decline in budgetary allocations for overhead for the police despite the increasing security challenges it has to contend with. The police IG said the slight increase in capital expenditure in the 2013 budget was because of injection of constituency projects. But he said out of a sum of 14 billion naira appropriated for capital expenditure in 2013, only 10.9 billion was released. In the 2013 Appropriation Act, the sum of 14 billion 096 was appropriated for capital project as at 31st December 2013. Only the sum of 10.989 was released, representing 77.96%. And I made an explanation. If we subtract, because ordinarily sometimes, you know, these constituency projects, sometimes they don't come. But if they are not there, it means that uh, only six point something billion was released to us out of the 10 billion. The Inspector General of Police also said the Nigeria Police Force may not be able to pay the salaries of his personnel in 2014 as there is a shortfall of 14.4 billion naira in the personnel cost earmarked for 2014. He said the budget office earmarked 279 billion naira for personnel cost against 293 billion required to pay police personnel. Uh, Mr. Chairman, even the 10 billion release, the I talk about constituency, 4 billion was put for constituency. So if you take 4 billion out of 10, we are left with 6. 
and still we are expected to ensure that there is no robbery, there is no kidnapping, there is no uh, stealing, and we are expected to ensure that our, of our officers and men are given the best in terms of welfare. And that's why you go about, you see policemen without rank keep. You see some of them with tattered uniform. It's not because the administration does not care. We do care. But you can only give what you have. These things don't come from personal pockets. They come from a budgetary allocation made by government. And if it's not there, it is not there. It takes about 1,700,000 to kit one policeman. We are not talking about giving him a walkie-talkie. We are not talking about giving him a pistol. We are not talking about giving him a button. We are not talking about giving him a telephone. And this is ideal police service that you, you want to see. And that's why when people come back to this country, from England or Europe or America, they will tell you, why are our policemen not like that? And I say, because you have not provided those tools for your policemen to be like that. Committee members expressed concern over the decrease in allocation in some critical areas. People who use 292 billion naira to pay for their salary last year is getting to uh, 79, which means uh, roughly, you are telling us that roughly more than 2,000 or 3,000 police officers have been killed or have died within one year. I think uh, you people have to look at it very well. I don't want a situation where the police officers will be reluctant or go on strike. And uh, we, we in the committee will not sit down and be looking at it happening like that. So the issue of their salary is key. Anti-corruption agencies, namely the EFCC and ICPC, also appeared before the relevant committee to defend their budgets. However, lawmakers were not prepared to confine themselves to the budget but delved into other issues of concern. We know APC is one of the past of presidency. If truly you are doing your work transparently, why up to today you do not investigate the NNPC? Once the National Assembly is looking into the matter, we will have to wait until they conclude. The full subsidy investigation we did, which we are doing, for which we have charged people to court, and which we are very much aware, even the son of the immediate past uh, chairman of PDP is one of the people standing trial. The, chair, the son of the uh, former chief PDP chairman, Ahmed Ali, is also standing trial. So other people that are very close to the people in power are standing trial. We did not go into the matter until it was concluded by the National Assembly and forwarded to us. We can't, we can't, we can't just jump into something well. Uh, you see, it's not a mob kind of thing. There must be sequence of events that will lead us to taking decisions. This thing about waiting for National Assembly to complete before it swing into action, to my mind, Mr. Chairman, is escapist, and I think it, it, it is not an acceptable approach. Because if you swing in to operate to investigations, the questions you ask are not the same as the ones we do. We can only look at papers, the same accused persons appearing before us, submit to us. Whereas you have the means of going behind the scene to find out and do all those things. So the, the investigations are not the same. 